Round of applause. <laughs> and that all seems to be good. <laughs> in, in my southern accent, good. What can you tell me about leopard fur? <laughs> leopard fur? Leopard fur! <laughs> <laughs> um, and I should be good to go. Uh, just let me know when you are. I'm going to press start recording now. Ooh, baby. I want to get Witcher and take your picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, where'd my sunglasses go? Here we go. I'm going to put these back on. Okay. Because it, it got weird right off the bat there. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I should be in... Uh, I, I should be playing keyboards in some 80s new wave band. <laughs> I really do. We could be. I mean, I look like I could be in the in the band too if we're wearing the uniform. I mean, we could be <laughs> like the Black Coats or something. Yeah, the Black Coats performing their hit single "Seagull of." What Power. can you tell me about Voodoo? <laughs> That's a good hit single. What can mm. you tell me about Voodoo? And the lead singer is just going, "What, what, <laughs> what, what, what?" That's it. We're back. Maybe I should do my intro. Hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and this is Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, Episode 5, with my good chum, as always, uh, Mr. Francisco Gonzalez. How are you doing, kind sir? I am great. It's been <laughs> three weeks three? <laughs> for realsies, but five weeks in the grand scheme of this fake time thing we're doing. <laughs> Francisco Gonzalez, Master of Time, uh, is very much on the ball here i'm just going to <laughs> nod and smile and say he's absolutely correct we've uh, upped our cosplay game this week this time yes around. yes i'm wearing a trench coat i'm going to really really regret this in the coming hour or so that we uh sorry half hour half hour that we'll be recording this episode um, yeah i don't think i'll be wearing my trench coat next week if you know what i mean <laughs> nah me me neither <laughs> i might actually just take it off and uh, but i did i did change into a white shirt uh, mm -hmm, you know, just to good. complete. And uh, what complete you cannot look, see... Yeah. yeah, I actually put on pants as well, and they are blue mm. jeans. Um, I did my... not, but my underwear is blue, so... <laughs> good on you. That, that's uh, that's, as oh, that's more information than anyone needed to know. <laughs> the approximation is absolutely uh, in keeping with uh, whatever we were not talking about. Anyway, this is Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, Episode 5. Where did we leave off last time? I don't remember. I think well, it was day three. I think we are going to go on to day three. Yay! Exactly. I was right. <laughs> Good. On to Bacchus's abode. Oh, I've, I've uh, been yes. there before. I sought there to conspire and whatever. So <laughs> he's talking about Napoleon House, right? Yes. That would be... Uh, like, Bacchus is the... Uh, what is it? The Greek god the... of drinking a lot of wine? I'm so yes, glad he's the wine you god. Join us today. Oh. Oh, I've Grace. got messages when you want them. And he basically has the face that I used mm. to have when I used to drink a lot. I also just just has covering been. both of his eyes and just going, nope, nope, sunlight is bad. Yeah. Oh, Madame Casano. Oh, yeah, Madame Casano. She's great. <laughs> we'll get to racist. her. In a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to her in a minute. Yeah, good. Now, um, tell me what happened yesterday. Yeah, so talking about Bacchus's abode and the conspiring and stuff, because we're going to have to do this today Don't tell me you to get into Madame Casano. Yes. Uh, uh, there's that whole puzzle about getting... Wait, 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 we have to do what with Madame Casano? Well, we have to get in to see her, you see. Ah, uh, there we go. Yes, yes. Just yeah. a couple of modifiers there just to... Of course, of course. Yeah, how how silly of me know, to exclude those modifiers. Um, <laughs> just gonna have a drink and shut up now. <laughs> so there's the whole puzzle where you have to um, make the replica snake bracelet. Actually, yeah. hang on, no, Kazanu gives you the bracelet and then yeah. you do it. Yeah, yeah, you you pick you. I, I picked up some clay on day one, not knowing why the fuck I did that, but it is going to come very much in handy. No pun in, uh, actually, many puns intended, um, to make the the replica cast. And it's a puzzle that's been used and reused time and time again in a lot of adventure games. Uh, every time you have something slightly malleable, like maybe one of those uh, uh, gummy things you used to get in the dentist to get your your like your teeth oh, yeah. in dents and stuff, uh, or or just pieces of gum or um, uh, soap in Lisa Suit Larry Six, you just press anything into that and you have boom an instant replica of it. Hmm. 
But the problem with the puzzle in this one is that it requires a slight leap of logic because you have to help Sam, the chess player, and there's no indication whatsoever that he would have any any sort of skills required to do it for you. Like, it's one of those things where I guess you kind of have to trial and error and use the thing on everybody, and then when he gets it, he's like, Oh, I was a jeweler, I can do this. So it's like, oh, how was, how was I supposed to know that? No, wait, the bartender actually says that he is a jeweler. Um, this is kind of skipping ahead, but uh, once I get to Napoleon House and start digging around there, there's a lot of me backing and forthing, which I actually cut out of the video, uh, hmm. of me knowing that I was supposed to get Marcus to do this shit, or is it Sam? No, it's Marcus. Sam. Yeah. No, Mark. Uh, no, wait. Mar yeah. Marcus is Marcus the one, is the one that gets beaten. Mostly called. He left a is it? So it's Sam. Sam the jeweler. Yes, Sam's yeah. the jeweler. Sam and Marcus. Does that ring any bells instantly? Mm -hmm. I bet. I don't think it's. Maybe, no. but not right. Yeah. Kind of, mm, Probably not. More no. messages um, could don't don't don't, don't, s don't start telling me that this is related to the dig now. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, some other Lucas Arts property. Number. Right, right. But, um, but yeah, um, but if you talk to the bartender at Napoleon House, I think if you ask about other patrons, he starts talking about, well, uh, Sam is a jeweler and he retired and all of this shit, and they've been playing chess every day for 20 years. I don't think he mentions that, but I could be mistaken. I feel like he never says it, but... Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see, because when I know we get to Napoleon House, there's going to be a lot of fade-outs and fade-ins and shit, because, oh okay. my god, that took me... Also, this phone number. Oh, yeah. But I'm, did you, I'm so did you happy look at it ends it? on a lot of digits. I love Sorry. Virginia Capers' reading, dramatic reading of the phone number, because she's like, <laughs> The phone number is 4909. Three, two, four, three, three, yeah. three, three, three. Yeah. And I'm not exaggerating, that's exactly yeah. how she says it. That it is. It is the longest line in the entire game. And I think it I, is. I, 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 didn't, I didn't do that, no. What the hell are you talking about? But I'm so glad you did, so we didn't have to. I didn't have to cut that in Good. or anything. Good. And uh, um, this is Ephraim Zimbalis yeah, Jr., a... Yes. An actor that I'm supposed to recognize. Uh, yeah, but I know. I, <laughs> I remember reading in the the TV guide in like not not like TV guide magazine, but like the little crappy TV guide that would come with the newspaper. I would you know in the 90s, late 90s, I browse through it because we didn't have the internet back then. So and there was TV, and you didn't have you had that stupid guide channel. Anyway, this is getting too long. But the point is. There was a show on like PBS or something that was like Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. presents something, and I was like, "Oh, that's the guy from Gabriel Knight. He has a TV show. I wonder what it is." And then I never watched it. <laughs> it's a it's an old guy who does not have this accent. That's right. Um, and it is kind of one of those uh, exaggerated TV German accents. Would you please show me the microfilm kind of accent? Yes. And he kind oh, of Gabriel. veers in. Yeah. I am constipated while I am reading this. Oh, please tell me about your family. Please read the journal. Read the journal, please. I'm on the loo and I can't do it myself. I wiped my ass with the last pages. They might be a bit smelly. Anyway. Oh, but but going back to the Sam the jeweler thing, I know that Phoenix, uh, in their remake, they did a. Uh, they did a little hint thing where in one of the papers there was an ad for Sam the Jeweler. Um, oh, my favorite line! There you go. Sorry, oh, we go. <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt. Let me borrow. No, it's fine. Yeah, well, you borrowed again in your history. <laughs> uh, there, no consequences whatsoever. We've already covered this, but uh, the most yeah. shit detective in all of New Orleans. Yeah. And I just yelled at you, but now we're gonna do the crash interrogation. I'm sure the invigorating. And also, I, I want to let you finish your bit because uh, the crash interrogation is one of my favorite scenes in the entire game, so... Oh, right, right. Okay, well, I'll be real quick. So they added this ad in the newspaper giving you the hint that Sam was a jeweler, but the question is, if he's retired, why does he still have an ad in the paper? Very good question. Um, I have I have no answers. 
<laughs> maybe maybe it's like his, his son oh. took over the shop and just forgot to erase his yeah. Maybe it's like... Uh... You no, he can't see to... what I'm doing on the video right yeah. now, but I just did a little homage to Fred. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, Craig. Yeah. And also the uh, um, the code, uh, the uh, game code kind of uh, spooks out on you there. It does that a couple of times during the game, where it kind of just turns the volume up to 100, regardless of what you have oh, it on. Yeah. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? I'm, I'm Look. signing along with Mosley. You, you can do the crash <laughs> animation if you want. Yeah, I could just sit here and wave my arms around, yeah. like jittery style. They picked you up were plain clothesmen. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's shuffling a very large pizza. He does. <laughs> he really does. And then he stops halfway through. And then he stops, because mostly just goes, No, that is not how you shuffle a pizza. Please. Mosley's animation is just two so frames of points. <laughs> I now, count I'm gonna at tell least you three. something, Crash. I got a big old lecture to give you, because my name's Detective Mosley, and I'm telling you that you did a bad thing. Blah, 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 blah. And now he's like, now he's like going, this pizza will not turn out to anything. Please stop waving at me. I can't concentrate. <laughs> I, I asked for pepperoni. This is not pepperoni. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I I know you didn't ask for pepperoni. I'm very sorry. I'm shaking my head because I'm very apologetic. Oh my god. Meanwhile, Gabriel's just like, oh well, all right, I guess. Gabriel's not even looking at what the the no, proceedings. He's really not. He's just staring at Mosley's bookshelf. Is this gonna end soon? Yeah. And, and the officer is just going, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> now here's something I find interesting. I tell you, tell a lot of care was put into these pizza. animations. I mean, I understand why they did this, to preface this, Can but all these characters have like 10 frame walk cycles and are rotoscoped and stuff, but that cop Damn. and a lot of the other cop extras have six frame walk cycles. Morning, I'm have to let him go. Yeah, because this is something that an only people who animation. make games can appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> But as you know, like as, as a casual gamer, you don't really realize because no. uh, I've also uh, a thing to factor in is back then we were playing the, uh, this game on 386s, 486s, maybe even That's a Pentium, and whenever the game would stutter or it would sort of have a long loading time or if the sound effects were delayed, as we've talked about in a previous episode, you just go, well, it's probably my machine, can't keep mm -hmm. up with this newfangled technology and stuff, and we'd never notice that it was in fact shit code. <laughs> and not yes. our sure machines acting up. Going well. Yeah. There's a lot of breaks being applied in different <laughs> Um the so what happens on day 3? I'm trying We're to remember. We have to on the victims now and they're not exactly Well, we have yeah. to uh, you learn uh, about Crash. Yeah. I was hoping to get more and out you of have Crash, to visit Kazanu and then there's the drawing with the go tomorrow morning. artist guy that you have to reconstruct the pattern. Yeah, and we've also got uh, the professor at Tulane University who was very interested yeah, yeah we get some very interested in telling us about his sex life. Order, yes, he's much. heterosexual, <laughs> although he doesn't practice sex often. Things happen, yes, and he's 35 so years I old, hate. and he looks like he's 70. <laughs> oh, wow, that was a big transition <laughs> there. Yeah, because it was from all, the office. That was very boring. He just he just up and scooted <laughs> because... Um, and this, this scene with the fortune teller kind of feels shoved in. I just like uh, to think that Gabriel is in the middle of the conversation with Mosley and he's just daydreaming about this and remembering what happened <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Mosley's like, still talking and he's just like, I remember I went to Jackson Square one time and there was his fortune teller and then I got her gravel and then she went. Not a bad idea. Oh, I love Tim Curry's delivery here. Oh, yeah. Well, let's appreciate it. Ooh, baby, I love the way you move. It's like he just snorted a line <laughs> in between this. Yeah. <laughs> Now he's ready to go for the next yep. several she lines. Wants me. No, she do, doesn't, do, 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 do. A lot of <laughs> rotoscoping and a lot of care detail went into this little dance here. Uh, yeah, which is I a wish they had put uh, it's like 15 pixels high. Maybe I wish even they had less. put enough as much effort into her voice acting. Oh. <laughs> And there's just and, and she's completely casual about that. She just goes this big sexy dance, put the veil around you, Elvis style, and it just chucks it on the floor and goes, "Fuck it, I'm off." <laughs> yeah, I think she veil. she was doing and that also, to be coy. Also, look at oh, uh, I cut out a bit of a lot of pixel hunting because that uh, scarf is like one maybe two pixels wide, and I was playing on a tiny laptop monitor. Oh. There was like ten minutes of me just clicking on the grass endlessly, just going, "Pick the fucking scarf up, please." Ah, uh, yes. It's a snake scale. 
Wow, Virginia Cabers is really all over the snake skin Why, business. it's a snake skin! <laughs> Sit down, Virginia, please. <laughs> it's a snake skin! Oh, wait, let me Easy. not stand up too much, because then you'll see my underpants. <laughs> underpants? Hmm. Hmm. Um, anyway, anyway, this whole scene feels a little shoehorned in, if you ask me. Um, and it's never fully explained why she... Spoiler. Goes a little ape shit on you at the end. Her eyes kind of roll back in her head, which is spooky. Yeah. I like, I like the, uh, I like the scene as it is, but it kind of feels like, oh, well, there just happened to be a fortune teller in Jackson Square, and it's one of those things. Also, from a game design perspective, where you have to sort of walk around the town. You're not quite sure where to go next, and you go, oh, well, there's something new. I should do something about that. It kind of feels yeah. a little shoehorned in. Well. No. It's really playing I to that trope would. of if you have mm. a psychic or a fortune Strong. teller in one of these yes. stories, they're yeah. you're so more often than not, mm. like, you don't Let's take them seriously and then they make, like, a serious pre prediction what or whatever. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of tying into the whole there's definitely some some sort of bad magic going around and she's affected yeah. by it. There's somehow. some bad voodoo going. It's it's kind of like in horror films you have a, a dog or a young child and the dog just starts right and the uh, and the child just goes I'm not talking to anyone I'm talking to the person in my closet and the fortune teller eye rolls back in her head and just goes oh. and suddenly her voice drops a few octaves. Yeah. Which is exactly what's go. gonna happen right now. Yeah. Are you okay? I do like the vo- <laughs> And they- It I sounded mean, like she went underwater. Yeah, it it, it does, because what they did was Whoa, just- Stuart Ambrose just took a big hit off the bong that he evidently <laughs> kept in <laughs> the, uh, uh, the recording what? studio and just oh, went, let's just you. pitch it down. Man, and then he exhaled and went, day. And that, that will be it. Yours really freaked well, me they had to add some, some sort of flanger type effect on creepy. it too. Yeah. You've finished it. There are. Yeah, and you're welcome. Voices. Here. Wow, and also the delivery is, is kind of in. It, uh -huh. It's not spooky. It's like in the. I'm the very surprised that this is happening. So. Do you know what I just? Six. What I just noticed. You see that that jogger guy? Yeah. You see how his little hoodie now in the side view sort of flaps up and down? Yeah. When it was in his back view, there's one pixel, there's one frame of his animation where there's just like this weird thing coming out of the side of his head. <laughs> that would be the uh, uh, parasite stem that's controlling him. Mm. He's been jogging around Jackson Square for 48 hours now. Wow. He is fatigued as shit, He's but dedicated. the parasite is just telling him to keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. As it happens. Oh, here we go. Now we're crank calling Madame Casanova. Hello. One Hi. thing is that's always bugged me about the telephone yes. in Gabriel Knight what 1 is that you? all of the digits you have the corresponding uh, tone. They've sampled a, an actual phone except yes. for the digit 2. What are you yeah. Saying? No. It has that very uh, sort of just Goodbye. you go into Audacity and just go generate tone kind of Yeah, feature. that, bothered, that, that always press. bothered me too. Really? Yeah. yeah. It really bothers it was, the shit out of me. Yeah. I actually ripped this off when I, uh... <laughs> no. No. You're no. ripping off Gabriel Knight? No. Me? No, in, in Ben Jordan 4, which you haven't played yet. You ripping off uh, Gabriel Knight in Ben Jordan? No. I know. Wait, have you, have you never played Ben Jordan 4? I I haven't. I got as far oh. as three, and then I went on to other things. I'm sorry. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I knew you were. I knew you were doing stream or. Uh, yeah. Well, not streams, but I, yeah, you were doing streams. I knew you were doing streams of them, but I didn't know. I didn't know if you were playing them blind or if you had played them before. Absolutely blind. Never played okay. them before. Well, I'm gonna I'm, warn I mean, you. I'm, I'm gonna warn you. Ben Jordan Four features a cell phone, but the cell phone works like this phone. It doesn't really? work like a normal cell phone, mm. like, it doesn't have, like, Tell a press to call you button. You just have to pr dial the numbers, and the timer can be a little iffy. Uh, so you're probably yes, going to get pissed off at that cell phone. A lot of people <laughs> do. Well, I'm, I'm you again? Ab absolutely looking forward to that. Also, I yeah. like phones that when they I'm receive a Casper. proper he number, they just dial Casper? without you actually pressing a call to oh, call, so call this sweet. number button. Well, yeah, well, I most cell phones don't work that way. It's okay. No, uh, uh, landlines do, however, and this is yeah. a landline. Also, That's this true. person working Thanks. at the pet store is uh, is going to get fired. Is going to get fired yes. in the next couple of days. Yeah, well, oh, wow, he warped again. Yeah, I, I do these jump cuts because there is a lot of walking back and forth, and also, true. 
I would look like an idiot uh, because a lot a lot of time in Gabriel Knight is actually spent on the map screen just going, mm. where should I it's go next? Map screens are tricky, actually. I've I've um I've actually been I was having a discussion with my composer for Lamplight City the other day, and we were talking about lamp uh the map screen, and I, I've ha I've made games. I think there's been a map screen in I can't really pretty much play. every game that I've made, with the exception of a few. And well, Shardlight in particular. Shardlight had a map screen, that's true. Very nice, um, very nice map screen. It was. Um, very beautifully rendered. Um, but the problem with map screens is that, generally speaking, you're not on them for very long. So, when it comes to the idea of having a special theme for your map screen, um, that can be tricky, because you don't want to have well, a piece of music that's too long and you don't ever hear it. No, you just want the uh, or... short 30 second loop, like Mega right. Man loop kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. also can, can we just briefly comment on the fact that he just went into a church, oh, yeah. went into the priest's quarters, stole a bunch of shit, and then walked out? Yeah, I've never tried that. I don't think that would really fly in real life. Yeah, and, and, and not just like bits and bobs. He didn't like steal a candle or... No, like, he a, took a no, whole shirt and collar. He took a shirt and collar. All right, uh, anyway, sorry, just, just wanted to point that out because that seems like really odd behavior for just about anyone, really. Yeah. Also, Regardless you just knocked on- son you're getting. You just yeah. knocked on the door All and right. she said that you're he's evil. Driving. Yeah. And now he's just gonna change clothes and slick back his hair and she- What's her excuse for obvi it obviously being the same person? Oh yeah, uh, this is the uh, the Superman effect. Uh, once I- uh, oh, uh, You can't see this, but once I remove my glasses, I am an entirely different person. As you can plainly see, um, yeah, right now, see, she I doesn't can... recognize that he was a completely different person. But he does, she, she does, I mean, look at him and go, wait, your hair is really messy. You can't be a proper bishop. Now come yeah. back when you've slicked back your hair and I shall allow you in. Adventure game yeah. logic. See, this is exactly the kind of thing, not to, not to harp on, uh, or not to keep pimping my game, but this is the exact <laughs> sort of thing that I wanted to play with in Lamplight City. See, if this was Lamplight City, and you I had do tried doing heart. that, and she had seen you again... His hair changed color. Yeah, there would have been acknowledgement of that, and if you mess up too many times, she would have just refused to see you, and then you would have not been able to pursue this lead. But... This so you'd have that not my blight city. So you'd have that sort of consequence uh, to your action because exactly. a, lot, a lot of the criticisms well, levied at adventure games right. in general, and, and uh, the sort of thing that we tend to forgive a lot as adventure game fans is that NPCs all sh uh, suffer from a lot of short-term memory loss. Oh yeah, they definitely do. Thank you. Uh, and at least what they kind of built some responses into Madame Casanu, for example, like, uh, Oh, I'm so glad you came by and you uh, presented yourself very nicely. Come on right. in. Kind right. of thing, but that's a, that's about the extent of it. There ah! is no. Do you have any idea what? <laughs> Sorry, I always have to scream when I see Madame Casanu's face. <laughs> Why she looks like? She kind of looks like my grandma, actually. Oh uh, well, that's the, nice. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> not, not a lot of cross. I'm sorry, I screamed then. <laughs> well, my grandmother is kind of scary. Oh. <laughs> She's I love kind of... Madame Casanu. She's the kind of grandmother who phones you up and goes, I'm not dead yet! Oh, okay, nice. cool. <laughs> so glad to hear that. I, um... I love I her participated, voice, but... Yeah, I participated in a uh, Let's Ruin of Gabriel Knight a few years she ago. She did, with our mutual and, friend Rizulka. Yes, and Darth Helmet and others. And this is my favorite part, because Madame Casanu, I did the voice for her, and I... Well, ooh, you I left already? <laughs> Well, I kind of fucked up here because I don't actually have all the bits and bobs oh, I need to right. finish, uh, and we actually won't get to finish Madame Casanu's uh, scene until oh, the next episode. Oh, so this that. is just a tease. Okay. Well, I was just gonna say that I really enjoyed voicing Madame Casanu because I made her sound really horrible and I gave her terrible improv lines about "Ow, oh, my pet snake, Mr. Papers." <laughs> it was, it was really you, you made her into an old Jewish woman. Well, when she's talking about curses, she's like, They cursed me! I used to sound like Judy Garland, now I sound like Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> that is ex I was just gonna so. say, that's a very Gilbert Gottfried -y voice. I don't know what you're talking about! Oh, I forgot, we we haven't actually been to Tulane University yet. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Because it's, it's oh. been so many weeks. That's right. A, a, a week. A single week. Yes, of course. Yes. Ah, um, uh, Professor Hartridge. His, oh, his lecture. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna lose the jacket here. 
primarily. Okay, getting kind of hot under the lights. Uh, it's his... getting hot in here, so yeah. take off your cosplay. <laughs> it is I'm getting so, so hot, I'm not going to be a nerd anymore. I'm st I am still got the white t-shirt on. Um, um, maybe we should just progressively remove more clothing as the <laughs> as the weeks go on. Hi, welcome to episode twelve, and both of us are shirtless. Yeah. And one one of us is like squeezing sun oil into the palm of his hand, is going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, the lecture here. Yes. <laughs> what I want to say is his voice is actually very well cast, but. Um, Stuart M. Rosen, again, I'm sorry to harp on this guy, but he forgot to turn on the compression in the uh, studio. Normally when you do voice recording, I've learned this the hard way, uh, also when you're producing vocals for music and shit, you want to turn on a, a, a compression, which is not the same as MP3 compression, it is just a, a, an audio leveling that means that the, the low tones are as loud as the high tones. Sure. And he utterly fucked this up throughout the entire game, actually. And uh, to be honest, it's even more pronounced when you interrogate Crash in the church. Uh, That's because right. Well, yeah. There are a couple of lines where you can barely hear what he's saying, and then all of a sudden he coughs, <coughs> and, uh, and that's loud yeah. as shit. Uh, that's Stuart M. Rosen again hitting the bong instead of hitting the right keys in the vocal booth. Um, uh, and I he, love this narrative that you've created for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now he's just a stoner with a beard who did, yeah. they just yanked in off the street, going, "I won an Emmy." Sure you did. Produce this game, please. <laughs> So anyway, uh, the, the problem with this lecture is that what he's saying, although it is another info dump, it is in fact the third info dump we've had in this game so far, it's, it's uh, well, it's augmented by slides, that's always good, and the information presented is actually uh, very good and interesting, and it keeps it kind of short, and thirdly, as sort of a player proxy, Gabriel gets bored and falls asleep, so he doesn't actually listen to all of it. Yes. I also like the little animations of him walking back and forth and waving his arms around. That's nice detail to keep you in invested. Yeah, and it's really expressive. He's only like eight pixels high or something, because uh, he's just like from the uh, uh, waist up, and then he walks around, he's like 16 pixels high or something. And he's very expressive. Yeah. <laughs> the thing, the the only sir, the purpose that this really serves is to teach you how to spell Seke Madule. That's actually true, and this uh, slide of uh, Papa Nebo uh, just looks like some sheep herder wandered in in front of somebody's Polaroid yeah. camera, he does. Uh, levitating a goat next to him. Like, Look you don't take do. picture, camera steals so. all. <laughs> you don't take picture. Walk away. Just walk away. Go five Jesus. Five dollars. Five euro for picture. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the mustache. Tribe it might be. Highly the lower uh, but this, uh, the whole lecture is, um, I just realized I put my shirt on inside out. Oh. Uh, but uh, uh, the entire lecture actually is the best info dump I can think of, because this taught me so much about voodoo religion it's as true, like a 16-year-old yes. teenager. In a voodoo um, that I've actually just taken this for granted. I haven't actually went out and researched anything. It wasn't until like a year ago, I went on Wikipedia and just for the fun of it, looked up, you know, voodoo rituals and veves and shit like that. And I went, oh my God, it's actually true what this dude is mm. rambling about in a very condensed manner, of course, but of course, it's actually, of course. It's actually, it's, the research is solid. Yeah. As far as info dumps go, like you said, yeah, I think this is one of the best presented ones in any game that I can think of. Mm. And look at the maracas on those dudes. <laughs> They've got a big old oh, instrumental circle going. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll get to the bare-chested uh, pixel titties in just a just a tick. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder if I'm nah. Actually, I'm gonna leave those uncensored because honestly, the nipples are like one pixel. No one's gonna care. Yeah, exactly. Now this butt pluck, incidentally. No, and <laughs> this whatever the fuck this is. Kubasa. <laughs> yes, it sounds like something you'd order at a very shaky Pakistani Ritual restaurant. Mm. Or fwet cash. Not Which fresh was the cash? Yeah, the fresh cash. That Ritual was what uh, Madame Moonbeam. <laughs> fucking cunt. Uh, cunt uh, Whoa. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it. I don't like her. Mama Loa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama Loa! How much more stereotypical can we get in one... How much more xenophobic can I get in one video? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's try really hard. Cause at okay. Mama Loa is the supreme woman. I also like how he, he goes through this. Butterflies. 
Fireflies. <laughs> Fireflies. <laughs> I like how he's pissy at you, and he's like, "If you'd stayed awake during my lecture, you would." Know. I've I've had lecturers like that. Fire oh yeah, light. just go up to you. Also, uh, quick oh, question: Who yeah. is this person? Oh, this is supposed to be Gunter. I can't see. Is it Gunter? Because yes, it's, I was just gonna say it's definitely not Wolfgang. It's the wrong voice actor. Yeah, no, it's Gunter. Okay. Because you were you were listening to the music from his dream. It's not mine. Well, yeah, I thought maybe also, Robert Holmes just got a bit lazy there. If you look in the credits, Jim Cummings is credited as Gunter Ritter, so that's him. Oh my god, Okay. sorry. This bit actually legitimately freaked me out as a kid, and mm. looking back on it, it's it kind of silly because the, um... Well, first oh, of all, the, oh, uh, the, epi the episode ended. <laughs> Alright, let's just wrap well, that up then. quickly. Um, okay. Uh, the, um... Uh, the voices don't quite match what's going on on screen, especially Tim Curry's No! Let me yeah. out! No! Yeah. And all let that, me but... out! Let me <laughs> out! He doesn't yeah. sound so much scared as he does. Um... <laughs> kind of whiny. Kind of just yeah, like, kind ah, of. Mom, let me sleep another 30 Mom, minutes. Mom, let me out! Anyway. <laughs> Gunter goes, but there are waffles inside the coffin. No, Ooh. no, I want to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, but anyway, it legitimately freaked me out because um, I used to have a lot of nightmares as a kid. And mm. the idea of just falling asleep somewhere and some disembodied voice just trapping me in something is just uh, that, that, you know. And also, I was playing this at, at 16 years old, coming home from school at 2 a.m. And I was supposed to get up at 5 the next morning. So there's that. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, blast from the oh, past good. there. Good. Um, yeah. Maybe we should wrap this up. Yes. This is <laughs> another enjoyable episode. Yes. Uh, anything you want to add just uh, before we close this thing off? Uh, about Gabriel Knight? Yeah, yeah. Mm, mostly mostly Gabriel Knight. No, not really. Oh, cool. This coat uh, is hot. <laughs> That's all I'm going to add. You're still wearing the coat? Jesus. Yeah, um, I'm dedicated. Yeah. Uh, between episodes, I'm just going to flip my shirt, which uh, sounds that. like a euphemism for something weird, and I don't even want to think about that, but I'm just going to flip my shirt. Uh, anyway, oh shit, we're still rolling. Hi, um, please uh, like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do, but do leave us a comment because we really love the comments and do follow my dear chum Grundislav Games uh, on Twitter at what I just said. Um, and uh, check out his new game, Lamplight City. I got the yes. title right and everything. You did. Yay, yay and me. also, you can also check out the Blue Cup Tools podcast at at BCT underscore podcast. That thing's still going? Of course. Why does anybody <laughs> I, ask me that? <laughs> I, I asked in a sort of precocious manner. Uh, I, I haven't seen a new episode in a while. Yeah, well, we were going to do one this week, but Ben was coughing. Ah, uh, and what, one thing you don't want on your podcast is a coughing Australian dude. That's right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, when we return next week, I hope none of us will be coughing. Um, one of us might be shirtless. No promises. Actually, I, I can safely say none of us will be shirtless. In the next but anyway, thank you so much. I will see you around the Chrome Streams. <laughs>